everyone. Uh, so today I will talk about what you don't need necessarily an orchestrator tool like Apache Airflow and how it will depend on the context of your team or your stack. So let's go. So just as Tessa said, I'm data, data scientist currently, but I'm more and more uh, working as a data engineer. Um, as I work in several companies into several data stacks, um, I saw a lot, a lot of different patterns of how we orchestrate pipeline, how we deal with machine learning stuff, how we are doing Steve, how we are doing things in data overall. And so I'm more uh, a full stack data scientist, uh, if I if I said, uh, and and that's it. Yes. So um, nowadays it, it's a great time to orchestrate pipeline. Uh, we have a lot of tools, uh, open source open source tools. Uh, most of the time, like Apache Airflow, uh, uh, Daxter, Luigi, uh, and there are a lot of tools to orchestrate pipeline, orchestrate data jobs. Um, it is, it's a great time, and just to take a step back, uh, it's not it's quite new. Uh, before, we are more uh, using what I, I call scheduling rather than orchestration, because we are more using Crontarb or Rundeck tool like tool, where we more say uh, that. To schedule a job, we say I want this job to run at four four o'clock in clock in the morning, and then the job runs, and then the next job uh, will will won't be linked necessarily to the first job. So it more it was more about scheduling rather than real orchestration. And those new tools, though, like Apache Airflow, Daxter, uh, or Luigi, those tools um, all gather the the same concept known as DAG concept, which is stand for uh, directed acyclic graph, graph, where all your your tasks, all your jobs are um, described as a graph, as a DAG, uh, where uh, you link tasks uh, between them. And so, for instance, uh, if you if you you the first part of your pipeline of, of your pipeline, the first task uh, fails for any reason, then the other task won't be triggered, and uh, you are a real orchestration, a real trigger pattern, uh, thanks to this DAG concept. Uh, and this is quite good to have this kind of uh, tools now because first we have now one framework for all our jobs so within Apache Airflow you can do like anything you can uh, schedule jobs you can trigger things you can add sensors you can do a lot of things and this is all of this in one framework so it's quite good but uh, uh, easy to to enter the, the landscape um, we also have, um, you can write all your pipeline as code. You don't have necessarily to deal with a user interface where you drag and drop things on your on your computer. Uh, and now with pipeline as code, with Apache Airflow, we can uh, have more robust system. We can scale more. So, and it's more towards the uh, DevOps concepts. So uh, also it's a good thing. Uh, still, we have visualizations, visualizations tool. We are not always in code with Apache Airflow, for example, we have, you, have, you have your user interface where you can see your, your wall DAGs, all your DAGs, how uh, it fails, how it uh, success, succeed. So it's also good to have a visualization tool to see uh, your DAGs, to see uh, really what happens uh, in your orchestration. Uh, and also, as I said, uh, all these tools uh, are open source, so you can customize it and it evolves uh, all the time. So it's also a good, a good thing to, to keep things robust, scalable, and, uh, and easy to maintain. Uh, still, um, the learning curve to, to this tool is quite deep. Uh, uh, for example, Apache Airflow, it's quite easy to, to, to enter Apache Airflow and to start writing some depths of application. But more, more using, it, using it, more you have uh, different concept, concepts to learn. And being an expert in Apache Airflow is quite hard. And in fact, there are not many people that can be called ex expert in Airflow. So yes, the learning curve it may be maybe deep. Um, it's kind of hard to process real-time data. Uh, those kind of tools are more uh, focused on batch batch processing or micro batch processing. So it's not designed for real-time processing. It's not a big use case uh, nowadays, but uh, with more networks uh, improvements and more use case, uh, we, we you might have to to, to do some real time processing. So those those tools are not designed 
uh, at the basis for, for this kind of usage. Um, also, the setup and the infrastructure is not that easy. It's more and more easy because we have now Docker, we have uh, some cloud provider where we are we was there already instantiated uh, Airflow as a service, and there are a lot of tools like that. But in general, the setup and the infrastructure, infrastructure and the architecture that you need to to think uh, before using this kind of tools is a uh, yes is a bit tall uh, also. And maybe what we don't think a lot about is that uh, using one framework for all, uh, we enter into one centralization tool that in that not me, it may be not the, a good thing. Uh, when we think about uh, migration, if you want to change the tool, the, change the way you orchestrate the pipeline, uh, you are all, all is centralized into Apache Airflow, for instances. So it might be hard to migrate or change things uh, to uncouple uh, the things you, you are doing in these tools. Um, and so, besides uh, this kind of orchestration tools, we have also uh, more and more usage of uh, cloud providers so, such as AWS, uh, Google Cloud, or Microsoft Azure. Um, that it's more used for computing, processing, uh, storage, and big data things, uh, but they also provide uh, features to triggers and to orchestrate your pipelines in a different way than orchestrator. This is not proper tool uh, provided by this kind of uh, cloud providers, but more API uh, where you um, where you can uh, trigger things and build your pipelines. Um, the first things, uh, one of the big feature of these cloud providers as what we call function as a service or container as a service, where basically you are just um, upload your code, uh, you don't have to, to think about the environment, the infrastructure behind it. You upload your code and you can trigger it via, via an API or via uh, a run button. And so you do, it's quite easy to deploy your code, run it, and as it is, you don't have to think about the infrastructure, um, how it run in, in, the, in, the, in the background. Uh, it's function as a service, so you just, so it's, it, the world is quite good here. Uh, you just upload your code and it will run. It will be run when you when you want it. And also, uh, it, 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 uh, it, the, the, this cloud provider also provides a container as a service, which is the same as function as a service, but uh, uh, not only for the code, but you can also provide your own environment. So, for instance, you can say, uh, "I want to run this Docker image with this code," and then you you are good to go. You had, you don't have to think about the infrastructure beyond, and um, and yes, and the environment. Uh, the, the other big feature of uh, cloud provider is storage. Uh, this may be the, the, the one feature you want to use uh, when using a cloud uh, because you can. It's very. It's not very expensive. It's very low cost, and you can uh, upload a terabyte, petabyte of, of data quite easily. Uh, and uh, good features uh, beyond the storage itself is that you can trigger things according to what you upload to your storage. So for example, if you uh, upload a file to, uh, to a storage, uh, cloud storage provider, then you can trigger uh, a cloud function, for instance, and then uh, doing processing on the data itself. So you don't, so it also provides trigger apply, uh, which is a good thing. We will see uh, some example afterwards. Um, and to link, all the API, all the things you want to do, you have some messaging and queuing services uh, where you say, uh, we will see an example, an example after that, but where, where you just say, um, my data is, is processed here. Um, I broadcast this information to anyone we want to subscribe, and then subscribers can uh, put the data and do what they want. But you can make very scalable, scalable things with this kind of pattern and real time processing too. So it's quite good to, to know. Uh, so let's dive, in, let's dive into an example. Uh, let's say we have uh, we want to do some machine learning and some BI report uh, on some data, and those data are stored into a server and FTP somewhere outside of your organization. Um, thanks to um, this is an example with uh, AWS uh, uh, features, but we can do the same thing with uh, Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. Um, and thanks to the serverless features, you can 
you can do this kind of, uh, of system. So if I describe it, um, so first we declare a lambda function. So this is a fun uh, code that will be ingest uh, the FTP, the data from the FTP. Uh, and you say, uh, you can say with AWS, for instance, that you schedule this ingestion. So for instance, we can say like in Airflow, you can say at 2 a.m. I want to pull the data from the FTP. So this function will pull the data and store it into uh, storage. So somewhere on the cloud. And then directly, uh, you can, when the event of the data uh, happened in the, in the storage, you can trigger another Lambda. Uh, directly, so you say uh, when my file is uh, uploaded into the, the storage, then uh, trigger this next function that will ingest this data, transform this data into maybe a database, uh, database uh, to to log the things, and also broadcast the information to anyone who want to know that effectively, effectively this data has been uh, uh, ingested. And so the next step is that everyone who want to know that this data has been uh, transformed can subscribe to what we call a topic. Uh, so it's like a, a Slack channel or anything. A, a, anyone who subscribe to to this topic will be will have the information that the data has been transformed, has been ingest, ingested, and so you can it can uh, trigger again another function that will be maybe a machine learning task, uh, building a report, a report for your BI tool, anything. This is quite abstract here, but uh, you you can do a lot of things and scale a lot with this kind of um, tools. And all of this is serverless, so you don't have to think about the server behind the infrastructure. Uh, it's just API to API. Uh, another example, maybe more uh, about uh, transforming data into a data warehouse. Um, for instance, this is a Google Cloud example, but again, you can do this with AWS or Microsoft Azure quite easily. Uh, let's say we want, this, this is a big picture of, uh, of uh, an abstract, uh, data warehouse transformation to uh, system. Uh, so for instance, let's say you, you want, you have some external data uh, again, and you want to ingest this data into your data warehouse to do some, some transformation, some analytics. Uh, the first thing you can do is that you can schedule uh, the ingestion again, like uh, our previous example. So you can say at 2 a.m. at 2 a.m. I want to, uh, to pull the data from my external sources. Uh, uh, store it into uh, the data lake, into your storage. And then directly, again, uh, when the data is uploaded, you can trigger a tool, uh, some ingestions, ingestions, ingestions tool, sorry, uh, to uh, ingest your, the data into your warehouse. Uh, so this is the first step of just ingest and transform your data. And then uh, you can use other tool like uh, dbt to uh, transform your data, uh, but again, uh, scheduled, not, not scheduled by uh, an orchestration tool, but just by your CI CD or your scheduler. So you can say, for example, uh, at uh, every morning, I want to run uh, those models, those DBT models uh, against the data warehouse. Or uh, even more, you can say uh, that when my code is, uh, when I, I release a new code a version, a new transformation, then trigger directly the DBT pipeline so my data is up to date. And again, you can run dbt uh, not on the proper server or you you don't have necessarily to deal with the server installation you can maybe uh, use a cloud run so this is container as a service uh, where you just uh, uh, declare the dbt environment and it, it will be triggered directly by the scheduler or your cd cicd or any uh, trigger event you, you want to to use so those are two examples so the big advantages of this kind of systems uh, is that you can develop quite quickly um, because you are just API to API. You don't have to learn a lot of tools. Uh, those cloud providers features are just, yes, as I said, it's just API. So in, once you, you are used to use one, it's quite the same for other features. You don't have added infrastructure cost. As I said, it's all, almost all serverless. So you don't have to deal with the server. You don't deal to have the, with the scalability, not a lot at least, um, of this kind of system. So it's quite good too. Uh, it enforces task isolation. Uh, as you, um, it by design is, is designed to orchestrate the data. You don't, um, um, you are forces, you are, you must have to, 
to think before you you write your code to say oh yes uh, this machine learning will be triggered only when the data has been uh, uh, uploaded to metatelic and uh, before and before so you yes you you are you must think before you you doing the job so your task are quite isolated uh, it's easier to do real time because it's API to API and so you can use uh, several speci specific spe uh, serverless features that are um, specifically designed to real time processing and just as I said you have a lot of freedom that because it's just API to API so even if you're uh, not uh, fully into a cloud provider you can uh, maybe use another API for another tool so you are quite free in the way you want to design your system your orchestration system you, 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 the way you trigger your, your events. Uh, however, there are some drawbacks, like always. Uh, you are logging into a vendor, uh, you are logging into a cloud provider. So this is something you have to, to keep in mind. Even we, if we are using more and more cloud provider, we are still logging into, into these vendors. So it's, it's a big drawback, I guess. Uh, you lack customization, it's the same thing. You are used, just using the features of the cloud providers, so you don't have the, the freedom to do anything. Uh, if you have specific demands, specific needs, uh, you won't be able to do, to do them, maybe. Um, the big drawback is that you, it's hard to see the big picture. With Apache Airflow or orchestration tool, we have a user interface with, where we can see the tag, all the orchestration processes. Uh, with this kind of system, you will have to put some efforts on documentation, on good code designs, on good patterns, uh, to be sure that uh, you are do you are not doing uh, ugly legacy. Uh, so this is another drawback. Drawback. Uh, however, those drawbacks are quite good because this those are restrictions that often free our minds from too complex design decision. Uh, I remember when using Airflow in the, in the previous experience that uh, it was all good, but when we are when we are scaling more, we have some design concerns uh, to how we design those DAGs, how we encapsulate DAGs into DAGs. There are a lot, a lot of uh, complex decisions we have to make and using cloud provider features and trigger even Python like I, like I, like I explained uh, before. Is is restricts you in some way that it free your minds in another in another way, and so as I said, is designed to by by design is orchestration uh, because you are you you must have to think before you are doing the code. Uh, all is DAG, all is orchestration. And there are no other possibilities with this kind of uh, pattern. So uh, where we are now, it's not necessarily orchestration tool or cloud provider. Um, I, I think it's uh, both of the of both worlds. If you have uh, a big team, big, big centralized team with a lot of a, a lot of projects and you have already some infrastructure, uh, some engineer beyond, beyond to help you on the on the dealing with infrastructure, I think the best best tool is uh, Apache Airflow or any other orchestration tool, even if the, the more mature one is Apache Airflow, uh, I guess. And if you are more um, organized uh, across several squads, small teams with uh, scoped projects, and you are already into uh, some cloud provider uh, login, then maybe it, it could be good to see what uh, those, uh, those cloud can bring to the table because you can fully take advantage take advantages of, uh, of, of their tools, of their uh, power, powerful uh, as we said, Google and or AWS or Microsoft are big, big tech providers. So um, they have a lot of infrastructure and they have a lot of engineers beyond their tools. So it's a, it's a mature tool. Uh, however, the landscape is quite mature now. Uh, we have many solutions for different set of problems. Uh, we have a lot of orchestration tools. We have more and more providers, cloud providers with more and more features. And the modern data, data stack, as we as we call it now, is a I think a mix of both worlds and uh, yes I guess we we are we are moving for more and more uh, a combination be, beyond between these kind of tools so um, that's it for me don't hesitate to 
to ask me question. And if you like this talk, uh, I also write uh, a newsletter on some engineering, engineering patterns, some engineering uh, thinking uh, beyond our presentation, but about the whole data stack in the engineering uh, processes. So thanks. Thank you, everyone.